people are coming in. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. A great conversation with Gil Robertson from African American Film Critics Association. We're excited to have you join us for a formal conversation with, um, with Gil about the work that he's doing. So we'll start in a couple of minutes. Well, actually, probably 20 seconds. <laughs> Um, so I, I am so excited to sit down and have this conversation with you. I, I've known you for a long time and I was trying to remember where we met. And then I, it was, I was on a press junket for the Bay State Banner and I came into LA to do, uh, to do a review of, was it the Flintstones? What, it was, what? Well, it was not, it was like, the, that wasn't the name of it. It was with, um, I think oh it's been God. over 20 years I know. because I, we met before I moved to it from LA to Atlanta and that was 18 years ago. I know. I know. And so now I'm back in. So yeah, it's been, it's been a long time. Oh my gosh. And I just remember I had, I, that was like my first press junket. You were so incredibly nice to me and like took me in and like, introduced me to people and gave me some really great tips on writing um, reviews and I just really felt like your love and I and I I so appreciated that and I and I know how important that is for young journalists for especially black journalists you know coming into a space mm -hmm. that you're not used to being in so um, so that's why I'm just so glad, glad to be able to sit down and have a conversation with you you in that 20, I mean, it's amazing what you have done in that 20 years with AAFCA. But not only that, just your work as a writer, you know, as a member of the uh, National Press Club and, you know, National Association of Black Journalists, Recording Academy, National Academy of Television, Pictures, Motion Pictures, you know, you lecture everywhere. You're this huge, you know, person now in the entertainment industry and the work that you've done for, for journalists all over. And so, it's interesting because I, and I didn't know this about you, that you were once a political organizer and that you, and that you, which, you know, I mean, now that I know you, I, I, I get that. Um, and that you moved into entertainment journalism, you know, penning over 50 national covers and contributing to bylines and everything. And I would just love for you to share with the audience sort of your journey, um, you know, from that point to now. Uh, and I know it might be a lot, but even if you could just hit on some highlights, I think it's important for people that are in this business to hear that. Well, you know, it's funny we're talking this morning because uh, earlier today, uh, this afternoon, uh, earlier today I was talking with Karis Jagger, who is Mick Jagger's daughter. And she's one of the uh, creatives responsible for uh, uh, High on the Hog, which is a, oh. a popular Netflix show that looks at uh, the history of, of, of black food, uh, if you will. And so her uncle is Dennis Hunt, who uh, is a former reporter at the Los Angeles Times. And when I was growing up uh, in LA, I, um, one day I just picked up the phone and called Dennis and asked him, could I take him out to lunch? And so I was telling her this story today and I, I so I, since lost touch with him. And I was telling her to, you know, just sending her my love, uh, sending him my love through her. But yeah, you know, my parents really did provide a great uh, foundation for uh, my brother and I to pursue and be whoever we want it to be. And, and that was encouraged from day one. I mean, it may sound like someone 15 calling up a reporter at the Daily in their, in their t hometown and offering to take them to lunch, but, you know, it's exa exactly what I did. And so from, you know, from starting young, uh, you know, always having a love for uh, uh, the written word, for reading, for writing, uh, and again, being encouraged to do so, uh, it just gradually, you know, uh, developed into something that I felt I could uh, turn into a career. And so um, I don't want to bore anyone with, with everything from my teenage years <laughs> moving forward, but that was sort of the start. And then there was sort of another project. Like Dennis and I became fast friends and he became uh, very much a mentor 
to me uh, through high school and college as I was trying to figure things out. But, um, and that's a piece of advice, I guess, to start to give to uh, the attendees today is to not be afraid to reach out to people who you think can, can, uh, can uh, mentor you and who can offer you guidance as you are looking to create the building blocks for your career. You know, don't be intimidated by, you know, names and massheads and titles, you know, just simply go for it. Most people, I believe anyway, and I've always tried to live my life this way, believe in, uh, feel some sort of responsibility to giving back mm -hmm. and to making a contribution where they can. And so all they're gonna give you is one or two answers, yes or no. Right. And just because someone says no today, doesn't mean that they're gonna say no if you call or try again. Uh, they might be saying no at that time because they're just not having a good day. But maybe if you catch them at, at another time, they might be happy to talk to you and might be happy to allow a 15 year old to spend um, 50 cents on a cup of coffee. You know, this or even a 30 year old. <laughs> exactly. It's been part of their allowance to take them out for a coffee and a donut. But um, after college, after graduating with a degree in political science, I worked for a political think tank in Santa Monica uh, for about two years. And at the time, the idea was that I was going to go on to law school. And so, but I wanted to take a break and working at Poffenberger and Associates, I oh God, I still remember the name, uh, allowed me an opportunity to work in the political space um, and sort of gain some experience, you know, some real life experience. Mm -hmm. Again, growing up, uh, I, I wouldn't say that they were activists, but we were always community minded, our family and that our family as well as our extended family. So, you know, we were those families that, um, you know, we uh, would contribute to various causes. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents encouraged us to do that. And, you know, we would do some precinct walking, uh, just all of that kind of stuff. So organizing has been something that, you know, was in like just part of my DNA. But, okay, while working there, I decided to, and I don't really know what, you know, what was the impetus behind me deciding that uh, to give writing a chance, but I did. I was like, well, you know what, let me try this and see where it might lead. Because another thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to write books. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that by uh, establishing a byline for myself would open up certain doors in, pub in book publishing. And that was really the whole motivation. And so um, I quit the job, which probably wasn't the smartest thing. <laughs> And I uh, started to first call myself, you know, uh, an Annie journalist, an arts and entertainment journalist. And then I had to figure out how to become one. And so I went to, um, you know, there were a lot of magazines around at the time, uh, especially I mean, magazines targeting uh, the African-American mm -hmm. demo. And so I reached out to all of those publications, uh, you know, letting them know that I was available to them to uh, cover things LA, you know, which obviously meant Hollywood since there's such right. a fasc fascination with it. And was immediately told, you know, join the club, uh, but where are your clips? I had no idea what clips were. Right. And so uh, that left me, I was like, well, I can't get a clip unless you let me write for you. So anyway, I uh, figured out that I needed to get clips in order to get you know, right. to base one. And so I reached, went over to the LA Sentinel, which is the black newspaper here. And they gave me a list of newspapers that belong to the National Association of Black Newspapers. And so I called everyone telling them that I would be willing to give them uh, free stories in exchange for the clip. And Tim Butler, who was the editor at the Tri-State Defense, took me on and, uh, well, yeah, if you send something, you know, we like it, we'll run it. And so that gave me the clip and that opened the door to the New York publications, which really, uh, you know, me to develop and establish a career for myself as an anti-journalist. Wow. I mean, and that's really perseverance. I love that you just called, call, called yourself that. You're like, do you not know me? I'm an arts journalist. All right, I'll have those clips for you. Um, 
You know, you, you talk, uh, you know, you, you touched on a couple of things. I mean, I it's so funny because I started, I thought I was going to start my career in law school and go to law school and become a lawyer and um, and then sort of turned into arts and culture along the way. And, um, and you know, you, you sort of like turned your passion into something that is really successful. And you talk you talked also about mentorship and it's, it's sometimes it's hard, you know, it's hard one to be a mentor. It's hard to ask for mentors, but I think you're right. People could only say no. Was, was that a, was that a big part of creating um, the African-American Film Critics Association for you was to be able to have people come together, maybe provide mentorship and, and not feel like you're alone. Like I was that day when I stepped into that <laughs> film, film screening. Yeah, you're totally right, Lisa. That was very key to my motivation. Um, I, you know, had experienced how difficult it, it is to uh, create a uh, place for yourself uh, in um, in this field as an A and E uh, journalist, particularly when you're, you know, trying to interact with the major studios and deal with major talent. And um, you probably can already well, you know this. I don't really lack in confidence. So, <laughs> so, but even even with that said, I faced a lot of challenges and a lot of, uh, you know, and, and had I not been as aggressive or as confident, you know, uh, I probably would have shifted or decided to pursue something different. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I felt one of the things I wanted to, uh, the arms that I wanted Africa to provide was the arm of assistance to uh, next gen, up and coming, emerging uh, uh, blacks who were looking to, you know, find a way for themselves in this space. So that was very, very, very key to uh, my motivation for starting Africa. Yeah, and I and I think that you know you have definitely grown it into that uh, and helping sort of create that next generation of African American film critics. I, you know, it's interesting because I. I think about that a lot, especially here in Boston, where we don't have that, right? And there are so many more now black and brown films that are hitting. It's not just the, I mean, it's an independent circuit, of course, but it's also, you know, main AMC, it's movie theaters, but we don't, we don't have the black critics to, to, to be reviewing them necessarily. And that's so important. Well, we have our films reviewed by us, right? We're here, we're actually 90 members strong. And so they do, we do exist, you know, and, uh, you know, one of the disappointments for, for our organization, uh, to be quite honest, is uh, the fact that we don't get enough, um, uh, we're not sought out, it seems, by mm -hmm. independent black journalists. We do a lot of work for the majors. And, uh, and the, one of the things that we, one of our, you know, uh, goals in starting the organization uh, 18 years ago was to um, provide support to up and coming emerging uh, black filmmakers. And I would say during the course of, of that time, uh, very few have actually reached out to, uh, you know, take us up on that. And, and we're certainly, that's one of the reasons why we exist is to provide a helping hand uh, support to, to young filmmakers. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that is really important, and I think that there are probably ways for us who are film festival organizers um, to be able to have some sort of relationship, as we do. As we we talked about this a lot about you getting me to become a member, and then I stopped writing. Um, but there should maybe maybe it's a film festival membership or something, so that we can have a you know your members coming and reviewing these films because I do think you know. You know, as black people, we're going to review those in a different way. We're going to look at them in a different. Way. We're going to pick up those nuances, and that's what I think is really important when you have different people writing for different stories. So, um, so well, that we should yeah. talk about that because and now we have an academic uh, level which you would qualify for as the uh, as a director of a film festival. So let's talk a little bit. You've been, you know, you've done a, a lot, you know lately around diversity and talked a lot about diversity in Hollywood. And, and I'm just curious, you know, you're, you're in the thick of it. You're, you're going to AFI. You did something at, um, uh, at Tribeca, right, for the, for the first time. And so you're seeing, like, you're, you're in a, that 
space and that level where you're hearing all sorts of things that are going on. So can we talk a little bit about that? And do you think that things are changing? And if they are, or is, is this, is this going to stay? Man, we don't have enough time to dive into that. I mean, I think we are certainly experiencing good times now. How long um, the that will last is will be you know we'll find out. But for the time being, uh, the film and TV uh, community, the established you know mm -hmm. uh, film and TV community, does seem to be open to embracing a greater diversity of stories. Uh, and uh, and seems to be willing to make available uh, more opportunities, both in front and behind the camera. And and because of technology, uh, you know, um, you know, black and brown people are able to uh, members of diverse communities are able to really do it themselves. You know, right. now. Uh, and so that sort of forced Hollywood's hand in making sure that they. Uh, remain a part of the action. Uh, also, because of the changing demographics in the country and the globalization of films and um, has made it necessary for uh, the big box companies to uh, really begin to pay attention to diverse storytelling in a different way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, just, you know, we're 23 years old. We've been at this for 23 years and really supporting um, independent, we like to say fiercely independent uh, filmmakers. And really, you know, we, we have, um, you know, we get a, we get a lot of really great press here uh, for the work that we do. And we are very appreciative of it. Um, and so, but, you know, we would love to figure out a way, whether it's Emerson College or BU or other schools here, as you know, Massachusetts is a big um, college town, those journalism programs to help be a part of um, a part of your organization or understanding how to how what it is to be a black critic. So someone asked in, um, in the Q&A about, you know, there's a lot of individual writers too that are writing blogs, that are writing just for their websites, um, that their influencers, are, are, would they be part of the African American Film Critics Association? Like what, what are ways that people could become part of that if they're not necessarily writing for a major newspaper? Yeah, we've definitely over the years, we've tried to evolve with the times. And as such, you know, we've expanded uh, what the definition to us of being a film critic means. And so, right. you know, today we have uh, bloggers and bloggers and, um, you know, because young people are consuming media in a much different way than, you know, people from our generation. And so, um you gotta uh, be current with the times. So definitely, you know, all of the uh, all of the above are welcome. You know, to uh, you know uh, apply for membership, and certainly, you know, if you fit the criteria, you know, you can become a member. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think for us, it's more about consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just you know you're doing a review or providing coverage. You know, on a poor project. Uh, just because you're 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 in it you 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 have both feet in right right exactly so you know i mean it, and like you were saying about the change of the times things are changing so rapidly technology the way social media is used and i'm just wondering if you have seen sort of how social media has really sort of changed the marketing and uh, of, of african american films well, I mean, it's certainly um, amplified, you know, the visibility of a lot of those projects. Uh, if you have a, a great social media presence and really understand the algorithms, you're really able to create, uh, you know, buzz, you know, excitement around your projects and in turn, you know, uh, you know, gain the attention of a larger audience than you were if you were using traditional, you know, marketing uh, tools. And also uh, getting the attention of the studios who very often, you know, track a lot of social media mm -hmm. uh, so that they can find the next who, you know. Right. And so definitely social media is very, very, very much a player in how films are sold and, and how successful they become. That's a really interesting point because that's something that's completely and totally changed, right, in the last 20 years that filmmakers and filmmakers should be thinking more about that, their social media presence, about 
their websites. Um, and, and on that, you, you have been doing this for a while. And I'm wondering what you what you're feeling good about, right? From from starting this 18 years ago and just in your own writing and um, and what you've seen around the industry and, and everything. What do you what do you feel good about what's going on? And then and what do you feel really still needs to change as far as black film and um, and supporting black film and writing about black film? Well, you know, I'm feeling good about community. I think that over the last two decades, uh, we've really, uh, uh, it's come to feel like a community. When I first got into this, it was, uh, um, there weren't a lot of spaces that we occupied. And now in just about every area, uh, you know, in the industry above and below the line, you have you know, black people and uh, other people of color who mm -hmm. are there and who are who are making a difference, you know, and who are adding, who are contributing, you know, to the cinematic arts, you know, uh, from a, a, a Hannah Belcher, you know, as a set designer who won an Oscar a couple of years ago for Black Panther, you know, to um, Massachusetts, uh, daughter of Massachusetts, uh, Ruth Carter. Ruth Carter, right. The Academy Award. You know, we're, we're, we're becoming players in in areas that um, 20 years ago, you would have never, ever thought of, you know, and certainly when it comes to even our presence in the media, you know, uh, there are a lot more black influencers who are uh, in the mix and in very significant ways. I mean, the Kessa Moody is now the editor in chief over at the Hollywood Reporter. The uh, is African-American, uh, formerly of AP. And you also have Clayton Davis, who, is uh, the film awards editor over at Variety. Wow. And Clayton is a very proud Afro-Latino uh, who just moved here, relocated here from, from Jersey. So, uh, I mean, 20 years ago, those positions would have never been uh, <laughs> occupied by someone uh, of their hues, I, I can assure you. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's really exciting when you think about that and you see something, especially somewhere like a Variety, um, making those changes and people understanding that that's what that's what I feel good about that you that you see the changes I just want to make sure that they that they stick and that you know which I'm sure they will people are in those roles are perfect they're 100 percent qualified and can bring so much uh, to the table and you know as a film festival producer and supporting independent filmmakers there's always that question about you know, how do you get access to those people? How do you get people to, you know, look at my film when, you know, there, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot going on with Hollywood films, the studio films. There's a, there seems to be some sort of hierarchy, uh, but there are just so many stories out there that should be lifted up, not just in local, but in national uh, press. And, and maybe you don't make it there to like a Tribeca or, um, you know, a Sundance, but, there, I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of thinking about like little pockets of regional AACAs everywhere that can be part of that growing independent movement. Well, you know, I mean, persistence is something um, uh, that is, you know, just necessary that, you know, you have to walk the pavement and knock on doors. And, you know, for someone like uh, Nakessa or Clayton or myself, you, you know, I mean, there are only 24 hours in the day, and trust me, we use, <laughs> we're usually using most of them. You know, <laughs> so um, we're trying to get better uh, at uh, at. Uh, uh, in fact, we have a, a whole. We formed an entire committee of uh, members who their whole purpose is uh, is to engage and to uh, offer uh, support to. Um, independent filmmakers wow. because I mean it, it's challenging it is challenging when you have yeah. all of these different distractions and different obligations and um again it's you know it's sometimes the day feels like Groundhog Day because just they just flows one into the other into the other and before you know it it's the weekend and then you're right back at it again and it just seems like it never ever ends so we had to do that out of necessity to make sure that we could fulfill what we uh, what we state in our mandate, which is to support um, you know emerging filmmakers, because it's easy to pay attention to your point, you know, when um, 
when Warner Brothers is calling and or right. when Netflix is uh, they usually make it very, very easy. They make it enormously attractive for you to pay attention to them when they reach out. And a lot of times they will uh, dominate your entire attention span. And and that's, you know, you, you need to do that on, on the one hand to survive and to, uh, to sustain. But on the other hand, you know, part of our purpose is certainly to uplift and support um, people who may not have those types of deals in place yet. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, and, that, and that is, and it's a, that's exactly it. I see that as that balance. It's just like independent movie theaters who have a responsibility if you're doing a first run, you know, film that you can't necessarily, um, you know, you don't have the opportunity to bring in an, an independent film because you have these obligations. And so, I mean, I feel like, you know, you've been building this organization for 18 years and you really have open doors um, and, and been able to get into spaces that a lot of people can't get into. And I think that that's important, that that, that is truly, you know, important work. And, um, and I think that, I think that we all need to just, as you say, it's like perseverance, it's continuance, but it's also being able to be part of an organization like yours um, it's also, you know, being able to know the right person to talk to, uh, to find out how you can support not only filmmakers, but up and coming, um, uh, up and coming writers. So, uh, so yeah. So, yeah. And to answer your question from earlier, I mean, uh, I guess, and I guess maybe I must knew, I've known it instinctively, but, you know, part of being a, a reporter, uh, and this is sort of an old school notion, but part of being a journalist is discovery you know, mm -hmm. is to discover and to uh, introduce, you know, new talent. And so I it, thought nothing of picking up the phone and, and, and would do it all the time of calling a journalist that I felt I needed to know. And fortunately, <laughs> those people were very kind and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and followed through, you know, and I, and I truly believe, and it may be a little naive, that people in general are like that. If they can find the time that they will take you know, five or 10 minutes to talk to someone who is only asking them because they don't know, because they're trying to find the answer. And so who am I to, you know, to, you know, turn my nose up to something, someone who's coming authentically, you know, from a space where they want to gain knowledge. Right, right. Um, so we have a question uh, from the audience, Nancy. Nancy, I'm going to just uh, turn on your mic if you just want to. Hi, Nancy. So if you just want to ask your question of, of Gil. Go right ahead. Oh. Nancy, you have to unmute if you want to ask a question. I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, so we have a couple more minutes and um, uh, I have 150 more questions. <laughs> Well, one of the things you mentioned about the, 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 the films, uh, the types of movies that are in release, I would like to see a greater diversity of stories told. Uh, one of the best films that I don't really think uh, found the audience that it deserved was uh, Sylvie's Love. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, by Eugene Ash. And it came out during the pandemic. Came out during the pandemic. And um, the distributor could have handled things differently, but... Um, you know, finally, to have a film that didn't deal with, you know, with uh, with black trauma, that was just simply about two people falling in love. And I know, if, uh, uh, in my opinion, I'd like to see more and more stories that are wrapped around other, you know, slices of our lives, other than some of the political and social challenges that we may face as a community. And so, uh, I, for one, I'm looking for those types of stories, you know, high on the hog, you know, stories that are, are in, informative and that are uplifting. Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, we, you know, it's, I mean, you know, we find a lot of those stories in the independent um, film festival world. So we, so when you're thinking of high, off the, high on the hog, great program, but we just screened a film about James Hemmings, The Ghost in America's Kitchen, about James Hemmings was the was the chef cook mm -hmm. to Jefferson and had this really in, incredible discussion about um, 
about that and about where food actually really comes from and sort of the conversation about unearthing um, and bringing to, to light voices that we don't often hear from or hear about and having this, this community being able to bring those stories forth. So, I mean, that is one of the questions it's, you know, for how, which we sort of talked about, but not really about how do we find uh, these African-American film critics to be able to say, here are these great stories. And then you might get these great stories and then where, where do you take them from there? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So you could come and you could review, you know, Hemings or Madison or, you know, whatever it is that we have in our festival and then, um, or support someone who's here doing that. And then can they get to variety? Can they get to Ebony? Can they get to, you know what I mean? So mm. like those types of things. Well, very often, I, I, and, and certainly in the future, our members would be happy to serve as uh, jurors for, uh, for your film festival. Uh, we, uh, our members are jurors at everything from uh, the big tentpole festivals uh, to uh, you know to smaller ones, and certainly uh, you know would, would be honored to uh, support the festival in that way. And as far as uh, getting directly in touch with AFCA members, we will have some information up on our site. Uh, give us until mid-August that we'll talk about uh, this new committee that we formed. Uh, we have the members, we just have to create the page. That's and really exciting. Get in touch with them and upload. And we have a film competition going on now, in fact. We've had a film short competition going on since, uh, uh, since uh, February. We had a, a Black History Month vertical, a Women's History Month vertical, an Asian, a Asian Pacific History Month vertical, um, a an LGBTQ uh, vertical that's that's going on now for Pride. And we're gonna be announcing five winners uh, in August. Uh, and the top person will get a, a one year, well, all of, the, all of the winners will receive a one year membership to Film Independent, which is the organization uh, that produces the Spirit Awards. Right. And, um, and a bunch of other prizes. And then the, the, the main winner will receive $5,000 uh, to cover, uh, you know, cost to complete their movie, you know, as well as some other perks. So, um, wow. yeah, okay. go to AAFCA.com and definitely, um, you know, uh, if you have something, submit it. Um, are, are people still doing press junkets? They're doing well, a lot not, of not during COVID, but before that, or, or, or is, that, is that still a thing? That's still very much a thing. People <laughs> still love being flown back and forth across the country. <laughs> I don't, I think that for the most part, to the degree that they were doing it back when we were out mm -hmm. there, uh, I don't think that's ever going to return. No. Because, no, they're, they say they, 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 they're doing them virtually now. And they've <laughs> discovered that they can save a lot of money by just putting people on Zoom calls and letting them go for it. Now, your <laughs> tent poles, your Avengers, and your Star Wars, those films probably, James Bond, they're going to do mm -hmm. some big blowout. But for your average film, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Darn, those are fun. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen, but it'll happen in the virtual space. Right, right. It's all, it was also a really good networking opportunity. An I excellent felt like. networking opportunity. And, you know, and those of you who may not be in L.A. or, or New York, uh, NABJ is also a great resource. And usually through NABJ, you can find journalists in your market who, um, you know, who could maybe offer you some support. You know, maybe they can get you on the on their radio station or on their local webs on their website that focuses on local uh, local news and what people are doing in their community. You know, or you might yeah. get into the local paper. You might get into the local, you know, uh, the Bay Banner, or you might get into the Boston, you know, the Boston Globe. So. You never know. I mean, I would never leave any stone unturned if it was something that I really was looking to do. Yeah, and I think that's true for, as you were talking about before, for independent filmmakers to just be, you know, writing a press release or pitching your stories. And, you know, and I've said that, you know, earlier that we've had, you know, we have some great journalists here in, 
in in Massachusetts have been have written some beautiful stories about the festival and and some of the films that have been here. So we're we're lucky for that. All right. So 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 you built you know Afca and, and it's and it's very successful and um. So you know you're going to continue this for the next forty years. I know, but in between <laughs> in between that time, what's next? You you've written so many books. You you lecture all over. What's sort of like that next aha thing that you're that you're waiting to do that that's going to bring you as much joy as um, African American Film Critics Association has? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm actually going to be speaking at Boston College on July 27th, so I'm looking oh. forward to that. Okay. And you'll be able to find information about that date on our Instagram page and also on our Twitter page. I mean, we're uh, about we're you know constantly you know it's a year round uh, mm-hmm. endeavor you know. Through our via, via our podcast, our our Africa roundtables, um, you know our um, ceremonies, which include the Africa Awards, Africa TV Honors, which was uh, being held in August, and the Africa Salute to Excellence luncheon. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's always something that we're doing. We're there- probably going to be doing a book around uh, the history of Black, uh, uh, of African Americans or Blacks in cinema. Um, so yeah, we're, we're constantly, constantly, constantly doing something. I mean, it is. It's exciting to have seen it grow. It's exciting to see all the other work you're doing. You've been so generous with us and and sharing those, uh, those conversations, and we've shared them with our audiences, who I know yes. love them. So it's it's been wonderful to be able to be a partner with you um, and helping to support that because you can get those big guns in the room for conversations. I'm not there yet. <laughs> no, we, um, we're privileged. We feel privileged to have you as a partner. So thank you. So um, I want to thank you for taking this time to have this conversation with us. I, um, I know that you're really busy. I know that you're off to another festival to do some things. Um, I would love, we would love to support if um, the July 27th thing is a public thing or, or not. But, you know, I mean, I think that there are ways that we can, you know, help support the work you're doing uh, and throw some, some folks your way too around mentorship and just to be able to get some really great information on, on what you're doing and, and, and being a journalist. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, I will certainly send information your way and let us know what you're doing there in Roxbury. Let us know what you're doing there in Boston. I love Boston. And um, yeah, I'm always looking for a reason to come. So if there's a reason now that we're back open to to fly up there, that would be great. Or we can always do something virtually. Right. Or when we're in LA. Absolutely. Now that you're back in LA. Yes. All right. Yes. Gil, thank you so much. I so appreciate you and all of the work that you're doing and um, our friendship. So take care of yourself and, uh, and we will see you soon. Absolutely. God bless. Thank you. All right. Bye, you guys.